This is Neil Pittori for ESC 471. We're going to talk in this segment about continuous time signals and discrete time signals. And continuous time exists at all real valued time t. We're going to use letters like t and s to represent time in the continuous case. And our signal is going to be some function of time. We'll call it x of t to indicate that it is in continuous time. This is a voltage. If, we're, if you like units, as I do, we're going to talk about the units of the signal as being volts. And we're going to talk about the power, the instantaneous power of the signal as being the magnitude squared of x of t. And, you know, if this was a circuit's course, we would divide by r, the resistance, to get the power. But for everything uh, that we do, the resistance is arbitrary. So we just take 1 ohm as the resistance. And if you ever need the actual power, you can divide the power that we come up with with the actual resistance. So when we do that, um, divide by 1, or we leave it the same, our power is just x of t squared. And that's the instantaneous power. We also talk about the average power. The average power in the continuous time case means that we kind of, we integrate over time. We integrate that instantaneous power, x of t, magnitude squared, over time. We do it from over some period of time. The standard here is to take some period of time that's 2t length and then divide it by 2t. And if this signal um, is goes on forever, then we're going to take the limit as t goes to infinity. So we're considering all time from negative infinity to plus infinity, and we're averaging that power. Now, we also talk about energy. The energy of a continuous time signal is uh, typically referred to as E, and it's just going to be this integral um, over all time of the power, the instantaneous power of the signal. Okay, and then we get into these cases where if the signal exists for only a short period of time, um, so it goes to zero, um, and it starts at zero, and it doesn't, uh, doesn't have infinite energy during any period of time, then it's going to have, this is going to lead to a finite energy. And that's going to be, we're going to call this an energy signal. But when our power goes on for all time, like imagine a sinusoid that goes on infinitely in, uh, in all directions. So we have this signal that just goes on and on in both directions. That's going to have infinite energy because the instantaneous power is going to be positive for all time, well, positive or zero for all time. And when I calculate the energy, I'm just going to get infinity. So in that case, we can then talk about the average power. And when something has infinite energy and finite power, finite average power, we're going to call this a power signal. This concept is going to work the same in discrete time. So discrete time, I'm going to have the same kind of notation. We're going to call it x of n now. The Rice book that we're using for this class uses parentheses no matter whether it's discrete time or continuous time. So you might be used to having x of n, but we're going to have x of n in parentheses, okay? And that, uh, the only difference is going to be the letter here. The letter n or m or uh, k or l will indicate that it's a discrete time signal. It's still a voltage signal, so we're going to square x of n, 
to get the power at time n, at sample n, and we're going to integrate, or we're sorry, here we're going to sum over little n of all of the power to calculate the energy. So here I would say minus infinity to plus infinity, and that's going to give us the energy. And of course, we can still define power. We just pick um, some number, capital N, to kind of go to infinity. We've had, we'd have 1 over 2N. We'd pick the sum from N equals minus N to plus N. And actually, that would be 2N plus 1 uh, samples. So I divide by 2N plus 1 to get the average. And of course, the value squared gives us that instantaneous power. So this becomes our average power, and I should put average over here. We're going to be interested in signals that are power signals and signals that are energy signals. Another name for energy signal is we're going to call it a waveform. This is kind of a historical term that people use in signal processing and especially communication systems. So any finite energy signal is a waveform. Just to give you an example of a waveform, if I have a signal that looks like this and it goes to zero and stays at zero, that's going to be an energy signal or a waveform. I might have a sync function. Let me give you a different example on the same plot. You know, it might go like, and I'm not very good at drawing uh, signals, but that might be another example. Okay, so those are some examples, and that's the notation we're going to use for signals.